Okay, now let's try to understand what, what we just saw. First, let's try to establish a relationship between signal spectrum and signal energy. Let's say we have one ohm resistance and our signal loaded with this resistance. Total energy will be sum of all elemental energies. We can write it, but we can also uh, take signal as inverse Fourier transform. We can write integral in infinite word. Is multiplied with inverse Fourier transform. No, from this signal spectral function. Here I can spectral function is achieved as a Fourier transform from our signal. So, what it will give us? We can write mm, our energy on the one hand as a But on the other hand, we will receive our signal multiplied, multiplied with in infinite our signal spectral function. The omega, and it would be preferable to, to take it into the bracket. We can simply try uh, written uh, by uh, changing the integration sequence. We need to switch the integral. It will give us integral in infinite, sorry, infinite, our spectral function is integrated by omega multiplied with our signal A omega. T and time. Take a look what we got here. It's a spectral function, but with negative frequency. It's definitely nothing else than conjugated spectral function of our signal. So, our energy can be read as integral in infinite border from spectral function and co multiplied by conjugated spectral function or our function absolute and 
square. The square of our spectral function absolute value. So, I will write it clear. Energy equals to sorry uh, and here we will switch to zero. This uh, it's easy. Uh, square function uh, is uh, odd, so we don't need to integrate full scale. We can use only count from zero to infinity. Oh, square and definitely integration will be in the space of frequency. Yes, the, uh, what we got here, this uh, figure shows us links between signal energy in time space and in the frequent space. It's called the Parseval theorem. From the Parseval theorem, we can uh, derive me quantitative parameter or measure value called energy spectral density. See? It's called energy spectral density. It gives us energy distribution as a function of frequency. A possible theorem links signal energy in time with signal spectrum. Now, let's try to see what happens when two signals are working together. Let's say we have our one ohm resistance. There will be first signal and second signal. Let's say it's current. So, if sum of signal is applied to our one ohm resistance. Possible, it will emit some heat. What we can do? Take a look. We need our energy. Fourier, Fourier transformation is linear. If performing Fourier transform for first signal, we achieve spectral function as one and perform it for your transport on second signal we achieve spectral function two if do it to fully transform linearity and summer energy will be sum of energies achieved by Parseval theorem. It will be sum of 
our spectral function sum absolute value square and of course it should be integrated in frequency space. Now we need to open this brexit absolute value. It can be done very easy since both functions are complex. as a function of frequency yeah definitely square will give us cross spectral function plus second spectral function multiplied by conjugation of cross spectral function plus Conjugation of second spectral function, of course, it's a function of frequency. That's what we can use to open our absolute value. So I can rewrite Parseval theorem. in the following letter. Energy of the first signal plus energy of the second signal plus the signal Second signal. What is this? What we saw? Mutual energy. Mutual, we can call it mutual and uh, influence energy. The energy part uh, corresponding to signal mutual interference. What it is equal? First signal, spectral function, multiple, because it's an integral. Plus, integral. Second signal, spectral function, multiple, by conjugated second signal, spectral function plus plus conjugated plus uh, sorry it's conjugated not conjugated, the omega. I will a little bit shorten. Oh, uh, I have to a little bit shorten to save space. These all are frequency functions. One moment, I will write it down correctly. But take a look first. This one and this one are equal by possible theory. This one and this one. Again, we see a possible theorem. They are equal. This means what? This one and this integral are equal but because these two in pairs are equal by possible theorem so our 
interference energy will appear as the signal multiplied by second signal I can write it as mutual dp and is equal p conjugated as function of frequency plus first signal spectral function uh, multiple with conjugated second signal spectral function and we need to e integrate in the frequency space what we see this theorem wait one second oh please excuse it's an error that's correct. This theorem called Railway Theorem Railway Theorem tells us what two signal mutual influence or interference energy can be found on S integral in frequency space from first signal spectral function multiplied by second signal con conjugated spectral function plus f uh, signal conjugated spectral function multiplied with second signal spectral function if such energy is zero in case Mutual energy S1 not T S2 T DT is zero. Such signals are absolutely independent and they may coexist in one medium in one uh, signal space. Otherwise, if not zero is greater than zero. Such signals are coherent, they do interfere, and it's a question if such signal can coexist in one medium. Of course, if this energy is a resulting uh, mutual interference signal is below available. A noise level, we can allow them to coexist. If not, we need to separate the signal in some way. 